Assalamu alaikum. Today we're going to talk about the Haqqani Bajwa files, revelations about the nexus between Hussein Haqqani and Pakistan's former army chief, General retired Kamar Javed Bajwa, and their role in the regime change operation that led to the end of the former Prime Minister Imran Khan's democratically elected government. We are fortunate to have with us today the person who broke this, this story back in December 2022. Wakas Ahmed, who is on Twitter as Wakas. He's an independent journalist and a news editor who's worked both in the U.S. and in Pakistan. He's the founder of a brand new member-founded news website called Brief. Welcome, Wakas. Thank you so much for having me, Saman. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. Thanks for the time. Uh, so tell us about the Haqqani Bajwa file story that you broke. Uh, what light do these revelations um, shed on the regime change operation that toppled uh, Imran Khan's government, democratically elected government? Yeah, so basically, uh, we've been looking for proof of any wrongdoing or illegal acts involved in uh, the vote of no confidence, the constitutional vote of no confidence that happened in April 2022. Uh, which toppled Imran Khan's government. Mm -hmm. And we've always suspected, we've long suspected since the very first day uh, that there was uh, Pakistani establishment's involvement in that, which of course makes the whole move illegal. Because if illegal unconstitutional moves were involved in a constitutional uh, process, that uh, negates the whole process. So uh, we've been looking for proofs of uh, the military establishment's involvement in that. And uh, that the army chief at the time, General Kamar Javed Bajwa, his involvement in this political process, which is obviously against his oath and uh, against the Pakistani constitution. So Haqqani Bajwa file is the smoking gun, is the proof that Mr. Kamar uh, Javed Bajwa exceeded his man mandate, uh, exceeded the powers that were granted to his office and he conspired behind the back of his pm to make some moves that eventually caused the end of mr imran khan's government that is haqqani Bajwa files excellent and then you happened to meet uh haqqani hussein haqqani yes uh, uh matter of fact i did meet mr haqqani and uh one of the original clues uh about this whole uh Thing about this whole uh, collusion and Mr. Bajwa's move that moves that he was doing uh, behind the back of his prime minister, that clue came from Mr. Haqqani himself when he claimed that he met Mr. Bajwa in uh, UAE uh, right. around September 2021. So, uh, and we later, uh, we, I discovered that Mr. Bajwa had engaged Mr. Haqqani uh, very formally to uh, lobby in the US on his behalf. I see. So could you just tell us a few details about your meeting with Hussein Haqqani? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, I was, uh, this was around um, July, uh, 2022. Mm -hmm. uh, I had been uh, uh, investigating Mr. Haqqani and I had been in, uh, investigating Mr. Bajwa and his role behind Imran Khan's uh, toppling of Imran Khan's government, the regime change in Pakistan. So I had been investigating this and I got an opportunity to go to uh, Mr. Haqqani and had a private meeting with him with a friend of mine who was a very close acquaintance of Mr. Haqqani. Mr. Haqqani at that time felt comfortable enough and said a few things off the record. And I, being a journalist, uh, had complete intention to respect his uh, the, his wishes, basically, off the record, the deal that we had that we I would not disclose those things. Um, uh, Mr. Ba uh, Hakani, in that meeting, told me about his meeting with Mr. Bajwa, uh, how he had been formally engaged by Mr. Bajwa, and uh, how he's going to write a report for Mr. Bajwa when Mr. Bajwa finally comes to the US. So uh, remember, I'm telling you about July 2022. So Mr. Bajwa eventually does go to the US. And that report that Mr. Hakani was talking about does eventually get published. And that is a report that is, if you read it as a self-respecting Pakistani, it's a very, um, it's not a very good report uh, to read because uh, 
what Mr. Haqqani is advocating in that report is that the U.S. government should have direct relationship with, uh, with the Pakistani military establishment instead of going through the Pakistani democratically elected governments, uh, which is basically a sign that, you know, whoever the de democratically elected government in Pakistan is, is irrelevant. And this is like completely unconstitutional uh, as far as if, if you're a Pakistani and you would not like such uh, language against the Pakistani state, I would say. Uh, but Mr. Haqqani wrote this report and the whole reason for this report was to build up the character of Mr. Bajwa. At that time, Bajwa had not retired. And at that time, he had complete intention to, uh, to seek a, a, an extension. He wanted to pro prolong his tenure as the chief of army staff. So he had done many moves. So VONC, the regime change operation that happened, I feel that it was one of the many moves that Mr. Bajwa did to prolong his tenure. Until the end, till the day he retired, he made every attempt to try to make sure that he his uh, his tenure as the army chief gets uh, extended. He was unsuccessful in that, basically. But this was one of his attempts to uh, in, engage Mr. Bajwa, uh, sorry, Mr. Hakan, to engage Mr. Hakani, and uh, to try to build his profile in the U.S., which is one of the reasons which brings us to the documents. Uh, you know, the uh, hiring of Mr. Hakani as a foreign agent. And then Mr. Hakani, I believe, worked with uh, Robert Grenier and. Uh... Is yeah. that what you uh, that was mentioned in your report as well? Yeah, so Ro Mr. Robert Grenier is the former CIA station chief in Pakistan. Uh, he mm -hmm. came back to the US and eventually retired. And now he works for, a, he has, he runs a lobbying company. So think about Mr. Bajwa for a second. Mr. Yeah. Bajwa did not just hire Mr. Haqqani. Mr. Bajwa, in his brilliant, sharp, cunning mind, he hired a former CIA station chief. He thought that he's going to do a good job. He's going to ensure that my American base is covered while I pull this stunt off in Pakistan. This was his intention. So he hired Mr. Grenier and Mr. Grenier uh, all hired, like brought Hakani on board. And this was all known. So bringing Mr. Hakani by Mr. Gr uh, Grenier is not something that Bajwa did not foresee. This was completely by design because Hakani also met Bajwa and they must have discussed this, you know, they must have discussed this lobbying that uh, Mr. Bajwa had engaged and they must have discussed uh, what the uh, what the future course of action is. So uh, when Mr. Bajwa finally hires Mr. Hakani and Mr. Hakani completely changes, changes his... Uh, his viewpoint of the world, his his whole you know uh, way of thought, he changes everything. What Mr. Hakani had been saying for the past five seven years was that uh, Pakistan military is the bad guy in South Asia. Mr. Hakani was saying that Pakistani military is something that should not be engaged with at all in Pakistan. Mr. Hakani had been saying that Pakistani military is the problem. Suddenly, in September 2021, Mr. Hakani, after being after receiving his first payment, changes his tone and he says that uh, we must engage with Pakistani military. He says this outright and without any, you know, without any build up, without any any middle ground without any like spectrum of like slowly moving his audiences to to the other extreme no he does not do that he suddenly flips and that's an unexplained flip it can it this flip gets explained as soon as you look at the documents as soon as you uh, know about the the meeting that they had in uae and you have some documents to share with us i believe yeah, yeah, sure. But before that document, I, before I share that document, I'll tell you something interesting. So is there, since I, I broke this story in December, Mr. Hakani went on this tour. He went to like Pakistani TV channels. He went to YouTube uh, YouTubers and he went to podcasters and he went on this tour trying to explain himself. So in one of these shows in like uh, this uh, YouTuber, podcaster, Shazad Riyas show, uh, he says uh, something really interesting. And he claims that he 
had no relationship with Mr. Bajwa or whatever, like whoever hired Mr. Grenier's company from Pakistan, which is uh, Mr. Iftikhar Durrani, by the way. So yes. Iftikhar Durrani was chosen by Bajwa, by the Pakistani military establishment as the front man for this deal. So one law is already broken. So the first law that is broken is that America requires all foreign agents to be registered. So Mr. Uh, Grenier got registered. Uh, FARA requires Mr. Grenier to tell the American government who he is registered on behalf of. So Mr. Grenier says that I'm registered on the behalf of Mr. Iftikhar Durrani. Mr. This whole process uh, exists, this design exists because American government wants to know where the foreign money is coming from, where the money in America is coming from. If someone is speaking on someone else's behalf, American government wants to know on whose behalf this person speaks. Right. So according to this FARA document, uh, it says Mr. Grenier speaks on behalf of Mr. Iftikhar Durrani. But Mr. Iftikhar Durrani has gone on record to say that it was not him who was hiring Grenier. He said, he has the, uh, in Faria Idris show, he said that some people from the Pakistani military establishment asked him to sign on this FARA document. So as far as the American government is concerned, the principal, the person who is the foreign entity who has been paying Mr. Grenier is wrong. American government has been misled. It was actually the Pakistani military establishment that was paying Grenier, not Mr. Iftikhar Durrani. So the first law here is broken, where American military uh, American government has been misled. So another thing. So now to mislead, th this whole thing was done because nobody thought this would come out, right? So uh, Mr. Iftikhar Durrani uh, comes out and on, uh, sh uh, says it on a TV show that you know he his involvement was limited to. This. Now, Mr. Hakani goes to Shahzad Ghyas' show and says, uh, he says, the payments that he received were from Mr. Grenier and he had nothing to do with Iftikhar Durrani. He had, he did some other research for Grenier and uh, he doesn't even know Mr. Iftikhar Durrani. So let's hear this clip where he claims that he doesn't know Iftikhar Durrani, his relationship with, is only with Grenier. And the work that he did, the research that he did, was, was some for, for someone else. For was for not Mr. Iftikhar Durrani. Okay. So you can hear this clip. This is such a example that you are doing an interview. This is my interview and my relationship. What is it? What are you doing? This is not my relationship with you. So Grenier Saab, who was doing with him, I had a lot of people who were Grenier Saab for research. I had a lot of research and gave him information. I had a lot of payment. Now, they were working for Durrani Saab. Khan Saab said that Durrani Saab was working for Bajwa. So then Khan Saab should be prepared for him. Why are they doing this? How do they say that General Bajwa has hired Hussain Akkani? Hussain Akkani has hired General Bajwa. So he has no connection with him. He has no connection with me. He has no connection with me. He has no connection with Hussain Akkani. He has no connection with Grenier. So from here, कोई साजिश का सबूत नहीं है ये सिर्फ ऐसा है कि फलाना भी नीली शल, नीला शलवार कमीज पहने हुए था फलाना भी नीला शलवार कमीज पहना हुआ था इसलिए दोनों में कोई ताल्लुक होगा ये क्या बात है आई मीन दो पॉसिबिलिटीज हैं जाहिर बात है कि या तो बिल्कुल ही झूठ बोल रहे हैं वो कि या तो उनकी नाक के नीचे टेंस ऑफ थाउजेंड ऑफ डॉलर का पीटीआई ने कॉन्ट्रैक्ट कर लिया एक एक फर्म के साथ यूएस में और खान साहब को उस बात का इलम ही नहीं था तो दोनों पॉसिबिलिटीज डू नॉट मेक दम लुक गुड And neither possibility affects me. Yani, aapne kisko hire kiya? Usne aapke saath kya sulu kiya? Uska us kam se koi tal luk nahi hai jo mera jo jo maine kiya hai. Mera kam above board hai. Mera alag contract hai. Mujhe payment alag tarikhe ke saath hui hai. Aur us kam ke liye jo main legitimately karta hoon. Main lobbies nahi hoon. America mein bade sakht kawani hai lobby. Register hona padta hai. आपको रजिस्टर होना पड़ता है गैर मुल्कियों की नुमाइंदगी करने के लिए आपको रजिस्ट्रेशन फॉर्म भरना पड़ता है सो इन दिस क्लिप ही क्लेम्स दैट हिज रिलेशनशिप इज विद मिस्टर ग्रेनियर ही डजंट इवन नो हु इफ्तिखार दुरानी इज एंड ही डिडंट डू एनी लॉबीइंग एंड ही डिडंट सो लेट्स लुक एट दिस डॉक्यूमेंट दैट दिस इज द फारा डॉक्यूमेंट दैट वी हैव 
So let's look closely at this. Uh, it says the foreign principal is Mr. Iftikharu Rehman Durani. Mm -hmm. He gives the money and it goes directly to Mr. Hussain Haqqani. 20,000 on uh, September uh, 6th, 2021. And then October 29th, again, uh, 2021, $10,000 again. And then Milo James Himberger. This guy, Milo James Himberger, uh, he's some kid who works for Mr. Hussain Akani, by the way, uh, in his uh, thing, uh, Hudson, at Hudson. He was his intern. Anyway, so we can clearly see that this is a money that this is money that came from Iftikhar Durani and he went, this money went to uh, Mr. Hakani. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Hakani is supposed to be aware of this fact. If he's doing Actually, something, a foreign principal, he's supposed to be aware of this fact. And it is very clear in this document that this specific amount of money came from Iftikhar Durani and went to Mr. Hakani. And this is not the money that was meant for some other research. Mr. Hakani was involved in some other research for some other guy. And Mr. Grenier decided to pool all the resources and then give some of the money to Mr. Hakani. No, that, that's not it. This is a money that was uh, specifically meant for Mr. Hakani. And the research that we, he did for uh, Mr. Uh, Iftahar Durani, we would really like to know what that research was. And I've been trying to ask Mr. Hakani this, and he's been uh, evading me since December, actually. But he did meet with you in, uh, and this was in Dubai, or was it in New York where he? That met? was in DC in his home. It was in DC. Yeah. Tell it's, us it's, a little bit about that, and what did he tell you during that? So, meeting? like, let me finish this thought. Okay. So basically, Mr. Hakani receives this payment from Mr. Iftikhar Durani, and Mr. Hakani in uh, September. So the second law is being broken here. The second law is Mr. Hakani is supposed to do research, right? And he's supposed to send that research to uh, Iftikhar Durani or whoever. Mm -hmm. We would like to know the proof of this research. But what he actually does is, so in September, he starts writing these articles in favor of Mr. Bajwa, in favor of the Pakistani military, which is the true foreign principle. He had first, uh, they, like Mr. Bajwa had first like misrepresented who the uh, foreign principle was. Now, Mr. Hakani, because he because this thing has been hidden, Mr. Hakani can easily write articles and do lobbying activities while he does not claim to be a lobbyist. In this clip that we showed, he said that uh, he's not a lobbyist. But writing articles, building a narrative is a lobbying activity. And that changes with the payments that he receives. So there are multiple laws that are broken. But Mr. Hakani is not the main character. I would repeat, like, I keep, uh, this is a story that I've broken. And like, I've been uh, talking a lot about Mr. Hakani and Mr. Hakani has been, uh, because of this story, has been going on a tour of Pakistani TV channels and saying a lot of things. But the thing is, the most important thing is, Mr. Hakani is not the main character of the story. He's not even an important character. He's just a cog in the machine. He's the he's the person, he's the blabbermouth who spilled the beans in front of me. He's an idiot. So he was engaged by Mr. Bajwa. Mr. Bajwa is the main. Bajwa is the one who hired the former CIA guy. Mr. Bajwa is the one who is orchestrating things in DC, who's orchestrating things in you know Lahore, in Karachi, in Islamabad. He's the main character. He's the villain of the story. Mr. Hakani is the idiot who spilled the beans and got Bajwa in trouble. And this, this whole thing, because of Mr. Hakani's brilliance, is a proof of uh, Mr. Bajwa's treason. The fact that he went behind his prime minister's back and engaged a foreign lobbyist and decided to change his foreign policy and decided to reach out to foreign governments and he decided to change, you know, he decided to reach out to opposition politicians. All of these things, they are proofs of Mr. Bajwa's treason. And Mr. Bajwa's treason was to get getting his uh, the democratically elected prime minister, his boss, removed. Right. And that, that sedition that can actually be like he can yeah. technically he can be taken to court. Yeah, he but... should be court martialed. So yeah. because of the, because we know all of this, because we have a witness, because Mr. Tahar Durani says that he was not the foreign principal, because we have this document that says that Mr. Uh, Grenier and Mr. Hakani was hired, because Mr. Hakani has claimed that he met Bajwa 
and Faiz, by the way. And Faiz was like completely hand, hands in glove with Mr. Bajwa. So because he has told us all of this, that well, just for our viewers, General Retired Faiz it was the then uh, chief of the ISI. Yes. Right. Yes. He was the ISI chief. Right. And uh, by the way, uh, Mr. Grenier was engaged in July of 2021. And the first thing that he did was uh, organize a conference for Mr. Fez in D.C., uh, some kind of meetup, basically, because the lobbying started and the lobbying uh, started bearing some fruits. So a lot of efforts. Basically, what was happening is that what Mr. Imran Khan uh, keeps on saying is that things were happening behind his back. And there were many things that were happening behind his back. Some were related to foreign policy. Some were related to economy. Some were related to, uh, you know, um, reaching out to people like Mr. Akani and lobbying. All of these things were designed to uh, push Imran Khan out of prime ministership. This was the conspiracy. Mr. Hakani did not do any conspiracy. He played a cog in the machine of this grand conspiracy. He was the foot soldier of this uh, stupid uh, plan hashed by Mr. Bajwa to extend his tenure, to be the forever Fuhrer of Pakistani military, to be, you know, control the Pakistani politics. That was his grand design. And eventually in that grand design, a lot of really crazy things happened. Mr. Imran Khan, they, they tried to assassinate him. Arshid Sharif was martyred. So uh, all of these things, they're not coincidences. They're part of the same scheme that had been hashed by Mr. Bajwa, not by Mr. Hakani, not by even Nawaz Sharif or anybody else. This was Mr. Bajwa's brainchild. And people who have uh, you know, inherited Mr. Bajwa's legacy, who continue to take it forward, uh, they're like part of the plan, obviously. Now, uh, Mr. Hakani, you you told us, uh, actually did meet up with Mr. Bajwa himself. Yeah, yes. Right. And what were the details of that meeting? So Mr. Hakani claims that he was called to, uh, to UAE by some UAE officials. He was invited into a room and UAE officials were sitting next to him. And one by one, they left the room. And when everyone left the room, Mr. Hakani was alone in the room. Um, Mr. Bajwa, Mr. Fez, and all of these people entered the room. They had a meeting with Hakani. Hakani likes to be dramatic. I'm sure he was informed beforehand who he was going to meet because he flew from DC all the way to UAE. He's not going to do that as, like an Indian. Uh, so uh, he, they walk into a room. Mr. Fez is there. Mr. Bajwa is there. Mr. Bajwa says, you know, we need to build a new relationship with the US. So this is happening behind prime minister's back, right? Uh, Fez is the DGISI. He's supposed to tell his prime minister if there are major foreign policy moves going on behind the prime, minister back, mm -hmm. prime minister's back. He does not. We know this now that Fez does, did not tell uh, prime, the prime minister about this meeting. So in this meeting, Bajwa says, you know, we need to build uh, new bridges with the United States. Can you help us? And Mr. Bajwa uh, puts this whole thing, like his whole spiel in front of him. He's like, to make friendship with America, you need to do certain things. You need to be friends with Pakistan. Global dynamics are changing, and Pakistan is not lucrated anymore. Pakistan is not beautiful to America anymore. He gives this like this long lecture, and he claims that he did at least. So Mr. Bajwa mostly agrees with him because, because Mr. Bajwa also has, as we now know, poor understanding of global dynamics and international relations. Mr. Bajwa agrees with him and Mr. Bajwa is like, okay, help us with this. And then they'll uh, make your coming back to Pakistan e easier. And Mr. Hakani says, I don't want to come back to Pakistan, but just, you know, put me back on Pakistan, allow me back on Pakistani TV and uh, don't declare me a traitor anymore. Because as we know, Mr. Bajwa was declared disloyal to Pakistan by Justice uh, Kazi uh, Files. Hakani was. Mr. Hakani, sorry, Mr. Hakani right. was declared disloyal to Pakistan by Justice Kazi Faiz Isa in right. Memo Commission. Since then, he's been absent on Pakistani TV. Funnily enough, Mr. Hakani has now come on Pakistani TV and is now giving interviews. So this was one of those things that was discussed by Mr. Bajwa, with Mr. Bajwa when Mr. Hakani met him. Right. So and this now, is basically the meeting to, to you know build bridges with Mr. Hakani to hire him for... Uh, lobbying in the u.s right so it was mr 
Bajwa then, who really, really wanted to, you know, get the U.S. involved in yes. this whole, you know, the regime what change. He really, I think thing. what he really wanted to do was uh, he wanted to ensure that when he pulls off a regime change operation, nobody, uh, nobody scolds him. Nobody says what you're doing is wrong. So Americans don't say what you're doing is wrong. You know, the Pakistani opposition is on board. They don't say what you're doing is wrong. The Saudis, the Emiratis, nobody says that you're what you're doing is wrong. Usually the Middle Eastern countries, they don't they don't interfere in politics, uh, especially when things come to democracy and stuff. They're not democracies. America is a democracy. America claims that it supports democracies ab abroad. So usually America is not really happy when there's a military coup happening in other countries. And there was a military coup happening in Pakistan. What happened in Pakistan in most simple terms, if we are being honest to ourselves and if we are being honest to the world, what happened in Pakistan in April 2022 was a military coup. It was orchestrated by Mr. Bajwa and by his generals who were on board. And there were many generals, the whole institution like worked in a way that it helped topple the Imran Khan's government, which is completely unconstitutional. Uh, what Mr. Bajwa did behind the prime minister's back was completely unconstitutional, him engaging different stakeholders, non-stakeholders, foreign power, powers, everything completely unconstitutional. Mr. Fez not telling the prime minister that this was happening behind his back, completely unconstitutional. That is insubordination, illegal, could be court-martialed. All of these people, what they did was illegal. They should be in jail. Right. So now, why do you think General Bajwa did not want uh, Imran Khan as the prime minister? Because wasn't it true that they were both so-called on the same page to begin with? Because many of the commentators, like particularly those who get exposure from the international media, they some even asserted that uh, Khan only became the prime minister because he had Bajwa's backing. So what's your view on that? What went wrong? I don't think that's true. So if you go back to 2018 elections, not just 2018, you go back all the way to 2013, you see there was a gradual rise of PTI and Imran Khan. And uh, PTI got millions of votes in 2013. PTI had already become a bigger power than PPP. In 2018, PTI was an oncoming train. To stand in front of it would have been suicide. And no one, even in Pakistani military establishment, was able to stand in front of him. So what they did, what they usually do, the Pakistani military establishment, like what they have so far done, in usually, they backed a winning horse. And they had differences at that time with uh, the, their prime minister, uh, Nawaz Sharif. And Nawaz Sharif had, you know, the cases against Nawaz Sharif were not started by the military establishment. They were started after the Panama leaks, after, you know, the whole the Panama leaks were in the whole world. Other prime ministers in other countries also faced issues because of that. So after the Panama leaks, uh, the Supreme Court took the case uh, because Imran Khan built a movement around that. The Pakistani military could not stop many things. So what they did was they... Uh, they, they abandoned Mr. Nawaz Sharif because Mr. Nawaz Sharif was also not behaving really nicely with them. So uh, eventually, Imran Khan was supposed to win and they tried to endear himself, uh, themselves to Mr. Imran Khan, tried to build you know, a good relationship, tried to hijack his movement, tried to, hide, like, try to put their own people, like we know Mr. Faisal Wada, mm -hmm. they were infiltrated into Imran Khan's party by them. So they tried to completely compromise Imran Khan's party. What the Pakistani military establishments always, always main intention is to control the narrative, to, to control Pakistani politics. Pakistani politics can be controlled if you have people in every party and if you ensure that you play one party against the other and if you can ensure that each party is in your control. They did that with PTI. As soon as Pakistan PTI's government started in uh, 2018, they started slowly to work against it. So Mr. Bajwa, who was selected by uh, Nawaz Sharif, he started slowly to not, not exactly work against it. They were working together, but to ensure that the power does not actually go to the prime minister, that the power stays 
in the office of the army chief. So Go when on. he realized that Mr. Imran Khan was trying to assert himself, that he was trying to take away that power, that Mr. Bajwa had like completely controlled, that Mr. Bajwa thought that he was completely controlling all the Pakistani political factions. As Imran Khan got wiser to his moves, Mr. Bajwa started uh, fearing for his future. Hmm. Because I, like I said, he had he's an ambitious, he was an ambitious guy. He had a, he wanted a long future. He got one extension. He wanted another. So as he realized that Imran Khan is trying to grow wings, Imran Khan is trying to understand the system. Imran Khan is trying to uh, you know exert his power as the prime minister. And Imran Khan might even be bigger, become bigger than I could handle. As soon as he realized that, he uh, made a deal with the Pakistani opposition. He asked them, uh, you know, that if I do this move, will you give me a free path? Will you allow me to do all the things that I want to do? And I think the Pakistani opposition of that time, the PDM, made that deal with the devil. Uh, and that's how they came into power. Thank you so much for your time today, Pakas, and thank you for breaking the story. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, Saman.